parents asking questions. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 167. Welcome to the fourth anniversary edition of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'm John Kubler, and it was four years ago this week that I launched the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast. You know, I knew it had been a while, so I thought I'd go back and check, and what do you know? <laughs> I hit it right on the button, so I get to celebrate the fourth anniversary. Although, four isn't a real big deal. You know, you celebrate your first, hey, I've done this for a year, and maybe the third, and then the fifth, but how many people celebrate the fourth year? I don't know. Thought I would mention that, and uh, glad you're a part of this podcast now. This is 15 Minutes that will change your scholarship future. I am John Fugler. I am uh, an athletic scholarship coach and a dad of two scholarship athletes. Also head up uh, Recruit Me. I'm a podcaster and author and speaker. And this is, by the way, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. Uh, make sure you subscribe through your favorite podcast app. If you don't have a favorite podcast app, can I recommend the Apple podcast app? If you have an iPhone or Stitcher, if you have another kind of phone, uh, you can also find it on TuneIn Radio and iHeart and others. But uh, that way you get uh, the material, the stuff right away when it's released on Tuesdays. Uh, I, I've gotten some great questions lately and uh, wanted to share those with you because it just seems like this week uh, people have been uh, flooding me with questions and I've taken a few here to share with you that I thought that you might want to uh, get the answers to. So we'll get right into that. And one in particular that I'll go to in in pretty good depth, uh, because I believe that I, the question really was multifaceted. It will require a few answers. Uh, this one comes in anonymously, uh, and this parent asks, uh, should I try and build relationships with coaches while my child is in middle school? And I quickly answer no. Uh, don't waste your time. Don't waste your effort. And I'll tell you, you're also going to burn yourself out by doing that that early in your son or daughter's life and your life as well. Coaches just don't recruit out of middle school or junior high. Uh, wait until college or high school, excuse me. <laughs> wait until high school. Where am I going here? Yeah, wait until high school because that's when uh, coaches begin uh, the recruiting process and they actually are are really doing the recruiting when an athlete is in their junior year and sometimes in sophomore year as well, they start to look. There's uh, some groundwork you can do along the way. I always tell families that in your freshman year, this is your chance to really do your research, do your homework, uh, get to know this recruiting world. Uh, that's There's so much available on the internet. Uh, you can get my book, which walks you through it step by step. You can listen to these podcast episodes, uh, go to the NCAA website, get yourself familiar with recruiting uh, and get yourself familiar with some of the programs too, some of the schools that you and your athlete might be interested in. It's a great time to research and study because you're not going to get any action, real action on the recruiting front. So that's freshman year. Set yourself up. Sophomore year is when you can build the uh, the documents, the recruiting and marketing documents that you need in order to get a coach's interest. Yes, coaches aren't just going to come and find your son or daughter. You have to actually put some materials together that I call the um, uh, introductory packet that introduces your son or daughter to coaches. And beginning in sophomore year, you could put that together and begin to email the coaches. So the conversation can begin, and you have an opportunity to get on coaches' radar. You're not going to see much action, though, until junior year, and that is the prime year to really engage in the recruiting process and get the dialogues going between you and college coaches, or I should say your son or daughter and college coaches. Yeah, they're the ones that uh, need to do this. They're, you can be behind them and helping them out and doing the admin. Believe me, I did all that. You can do the, the behind-the-scenes work, but your son or daughter needs to be the face of the recruiting experiences. Coaches are, are recruiting your son or daughter, not you. And then senior year, boy, that's, that's high gear. That's when the decisions are made, commitments are made, and you're ramping up, and you've done your work through the first three years to be able to get to this 
opportunity to make the final school choice. That's when the offers will come. If you're one who maybe you're in junior year now and you're just thinking about recruiting, that's okay. You just got to squeeze it and ramp it up and work a little faster and do those things you would done in freshman and sophomore year, squeeze them into the junior year and, and move forward. Once again, I recommend my book and also uh, past episodes of this podcast to gather information to educate you on the timing of all these things. But in answer to this question I had, um, no, you don't want to do anything uh, in middle school. Okay, uh, Jew asks this question. We're hoping to get our son recruited for rowing. Uh, how can we customize your 3.0 tool for rowing? So uh, he's re- referring to uh, Recruit Me 3.0. Recruit Me 3.0 is my step-by-step system that you can find at recruitme.com slash system. And I'll just quickly say that I, I responded uh, to Jew that Recruit Me 3.0 will walk you and your son through the entire recruiting process for him to pursue a rowing scholarship, all the way from getting on coaches' radar to communicating with coaches to keeping their interests and choosing the right program. It's a step-by-step system. If you follow it closely, you'll know exactly what to do along the way. So I'll just... Leave that there because I don't want to. uh, (laughs) um, This isn't an advertisement, okay? Uh, Let's see. I've got another uh, question here that I really wanted to settle into. Um, Oh, first of all, this one, important. uh, Jim asked me this question. Uh, I said, happy weekend. This came over the weekend, of course. Hope you are well. Uh, Your email series has been very good, but I'm feeling uh, uh, overwhelmed, and I can understand why. Hopefully it's not. Uh, because of the emails I sent, but <laughs> hopefully that's been actually clarifying things for you. But he says, uh, just curious to know if you have any experience with families looking for swimming or diving scholarships. My um, 15-year-old continues to improve and finished fifth today out of 20-plus divers. Uh, thanks for any information you can share or web resource to start looking at colleges and universities that typically offer these kinds of scholarships. Uh, and Jim, yes, uh, I've worked with uh, swimming and diving athletes, in fact, athletes from just about every sport. What I teach through what you hear on these podcasts and what I've been teaching for almost 20 years is a step-by-step approach that works for every sport. Now, there are some sports that, uh, you know, it's a timed event. So swimming, for instance, uh, is a timed event. Diving isn't. <laughs> And there are some others that are that are timed events, track and field, some of those events, and, and you're being uh, recruited based on your time. But all the others, man, it's a step-by-step process that you have to go through uh, that even in these other sports, you, you do need to get the word out. You need to put yourself out there. But uh, your big question was, uh, any info I can share about resources to start looking at colleges and universities that offer these kinds of scholarships. And I pointed them to College Coaches Online. I haven't mentioned that in a while. College Coaches Online is a searchable database. Uh, You pay for access year by year. I think it's somewhere, it's either $39 or $59 for the year. Uh, So that's, that's important. That way you can, there's so many parameters and fields you can search uh, you can search by school size, cost, sports offered, of course, uh, part of the country, what uh, division they're in, what conference they're in. There's so many ways you can search, and College Coaches Online is a, a good resource, good tool for that. So, uh, Jim, I'm glad I was able to hopefully help you out on that. And then there's a, uh, a third one here from Claudia that I, I'm saving to last. Uh, her, her question, as I mentioned, multifaceted. And here's what Claudia says. My son is a sophomore. He plays soccer. His freshman year, we sent uh, intro emails and resume to schools uh, where he's interested in. Uh, when does he visit the schools? That's question number one. Does he attend the camps in the summer? That's question number two. Uh, I've received multiple versions of this, and I'm very confused. Hope you can help me out with this. All right. Well, let me kind of take this apart. This is a great question. Now, sophomore year, you're on track there. You you sent the emails and you sent the resumes out freshman year, and that's fine. 
freshman year, sophomore year, those are the that's when you can really get on that. And coaches then you ask about camps. Coaches will respond and let you know about camps that the the program is offering. Camps are an interesting animal. They can serve one of two purposes, usually. One, it's an opportunity for the school to get exposure, and it's a great fundraiser when you consider all the, the fees you have to pay to get into the camping. It's a great fundraising program for that program. Uh, it's, However, if that's the goal, then it's not really a recruiting camp. It's more of an instructional camp. Uh, the coaches aren't really looking uh, for recruits. They may find a couple that way, but that's not the primary objective. They are opening this up to anybody who wants to come. You may think because you got a camp brochure or a letter, or an email about a camp that you've been selected. Well, in in most cases, that's not that's not it. In the instructional camps, they want to get as many kids in there uh, to be able to one create good PR for the school and the program, and second, uh, fundraiser. And they want to develop athletes too, but it's something that is a real benefit to the program. The second type of camp you're looking for that I think you need to find are the recruiting camps. And and ask up front if this is a recruiting camp or just an instructional camp. Are you looking for prospects at this camp? Is this a camp that will be mainly populated by prospects? It's important to know that going into it. Uh, You want to go to camps that are indeed in the zone of where you're interested in, where your son or daughter schools he he or she is interested in. Make sure you're not wasting your time and money going to camps that you're really not considering that school or they're really on the fringe. Stay within the zone of, of programs that you're interested in. And you're going to get, as I mentioned, a lot of offers for, uh, for camps in the summer. So this will come up. Uh, you'll, you, you may even start receiving brochures now, and some schools are way ahead of the ahead of the curve. But mainly, this will come in after the first of the year and inviting you to the camp. Be careful. Uh, be selective. A great camp to go to is one which has multiple college coaches there from schools you're interested in. That would be ideal. Make sure though that this is indeed a recruiting camp because you're looking to be recruited. Uh, That's not to say instructional camps are bad. Our kids went to those. They had some good coaches at those instructional camps that they went to. I think we went to a couple of them, and it was to become a better athlete for them, become better ball players, baseball players. Uh, I don't want to negate that, but don't mistake a recruiting camp for an instructional camp. Uh, Then you ask about uh, visiting schools. When does he visit the schools? You may know that there's official visits and unofficial visits. You can make five official visits to campuses. That's when it's an all-expense-paid trip for your son or daughter to visit that that school. You're only allowed five of those. However, you can make unofficial visits where you take the initiative and you want to go out and and you want to check out that school, check out the program. You want to take the tour. You want to meet uh, some faculty, you want to meet uh, department heads, you want to, of course, meet the coaches, maybe even watch them practice if you can. If it's NAIA, you can actually practice with the team. Uh, and so when do you visit the schools? I say any time. I mean, it's a great experience. It gives you that 3D experience rather than just looking at the website, hearing from coaches by email or phone call, reading brochures, all that kind of stuff. You got to go there to experience that firsthand. And then you have something to compare it to. Uh, when you visit campuses, you become better at this in visiting campuses. In my book, I, I've got a whole uh, section on what to ask coaches um, and how to evaluate the academics, athletics, the financial, what to, what to ask the financial office. Uh, this is a good experience. I encourage you to go and visit the schools. You can't make a a lifetime of this, it gets expensive, but there, you can group them in a week or two weeks and go visit the schools or maybe just take a day and visit uh, some that are close by. It speaks highly to a coach when you visit their campus and when you meet with them face-to-face. It speaks highly to them, and you really get to maybe know that coach a little better by being face-to-face with him or her. So I encourage you to visit schools. 
and and do it as as much as you can. Uh, it, it, it's a big it's a big help. And I remember interviewing one coach on this podcast. He said, "This is when somebody comes to visit. It's it's big time. Uh, you're a cut above the others. You are. Uh, it could increase your chances. It shows that you're very interested. And if you've got the talent." The coach is going to be interested in you. Of course, you got to have the talent, but visiting the school is a big, big plus. Well, those are uh, four questions this week. If you have a question, you can email me at john at recruitme.com. John, J-O-N, at recruit-me.com. Don't forget to go after a couple things. One is the free recruiting power pack. You get the first steps to an athletic scholarship. This is a PDF. You get my audio recording of when and how to use video, and you get the template for your player profile or resume. That's all part of the free recruiting power pack on my website at recruitme.com. I mentioned my book, The Athletic Scholarship Playbook, a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents, and that is available on Amazon, and it's in print, it's in uh, uh, Kindle, and it's also in Audible audiobook, which I recommend uh, as you listen together. That's it for this week. I'll talk to you next week. God bless.